If you need to pay your bills or make extra money right now, Instacart is a good platform for doing that. Um, even before the pandemic, Instacart was an easy side gig. Right now, there are small batches going for big dollars, and I'm going to show you how to capitalize on that. Stick with me where I share my helpful tips to make you a faster shopper and help you make more money per batch. Hi guys, this is Katie Heflin with the Rideshare Guy. I have been with Instacart over three years now, going on four years, and about 2,000 shops. I've worked all over Texas and Houston and DFW and small country areas. I've learned small tips and tricks along the way to maintain my five-star happiness. Instacart has changed dramatically over the past few years, and I mean, it just seems to always be changing. Even now, we're going through a ton of changes. Although Instacart has been pretty competitive lately, I'm going to show you 10 tried and true practices that I use each time I shop in order to make the most money and be a faster shopper. Tip number one, choose your shopper area strategically. Now, this may be common sense, but for a long time, for some reason, I was traveling 15 plus miles to go to this somewhat rural suburban area, if that makes sense. It just, I liked it because there wasn't a, a lot of traffic, but the driving distances were long, and that was when gas was like almost three dollars a gallon I just was like well let me try my area and I'm making sometimes more if not um, yeah the same as I was making in the other area so try out different areas and what works for you and what what you are most efficient in to turn that tip on its head if your area is super oversaturated then consider driving a little bit farther to a different area that may not have as many shoppers so that way you get better you know batches and you can make more money tip number two shop the stores you're familiar with so if you're not at all familiar with Whole Foods or you know Costco or whatever just maybe do those later you know don't accept those batches I mean there's so many times where I took a batch and um, it took me two three hours just because there were so many complications I didn't know what I was doing I didn't know where I was so for me my store is Kroger I stick with Kroger the app um, the Instacart app also kind of itemizes the aisles so much better so you, you know you're just not running around trying to find stuff random items so choose a store that works with you in the beginning or if you just want to practice you know then you can you know take small batches from let's Albertsons or you know whatever your stores are Ralph's whatever tip number three communication is key I'm gonna be real and say that I absolutely hate the communication part of this job I absolutely hate it especially when I'm shopping um, a perfect order for me is when the customer you know I shop um, I don't have to text the person or message the person once while I'm shopping and I deliver without even having to see the person <laughs> that's not always the case and sometimes you know you're gonna have picky customers and customers who want to be messaged every you know item and every item change and that's fine what I found that this is mandatory with each order you open up the app and you know once you hit start to shop and immediately before you even look at any of the items you message your shopper you're letting them know that hey I'm not gonna sit around and text you because I need to focus on shopping and getting you the right items so you're putting the ball in their court like hey um, you know pay attention if you're really really picky I need you to speak up because I can't chase around each customer I mean I'll, you'll just lose money that way don't do it and I really care that I get the right thing but most importantly uh, please watch the app so a lot of the times they don't reply but um, they'll see the comments later maybe after their you know their shopper has dropped off their groceries it just lets them reminds them again that you're a real person not a robot and you're not some distracted teenager just throwing stuff in a cart you know and dropping it off at their house so it just I feel like it definitely just makes them feel better and they're they they usually tip better because of it tip number four communicate that you are not going to communicate the whole time you shop um, kind of be assertive in that otherwise I mean they almost assume you're you are their personal assistant like I just kind of went into you message them um, you know and you can always come on the app and tell me to refund or you know get you something else so I'm putting the again the ball in their court it'll just kill your time and in turn your profits if they're if they're completely out of something like blackberries that's not something I can just go and you know switch out easily so I will you know message them oh no they're out of your blackberries um, what what should I get to replace this with and if they don't respond 
I grab blueberries and I replace them with blueberries because you know and I just keep going I keep going so um, sometimes the customer will come back on and say oh no you know ten minutes later when you're all the way across the store but a lot of times we'll just let it go and then that way you've saved yourself money and time waiting for the customer to answer you in my experience if a customer is really picky you know that type of person who needs to know every single detail everything about their order has to be exactly you know in my experience they will follow you on the app so you won't have to chase them down which is what you want now if I've had to make some really weird replacements I'll go ahead and call the customer before I check out if they haven't been texting me or responding to any of my texts and um, if they answer I'll let them know sometimes they tell you okay go switch all these out which is annoying but it's part of the job or sometimes they won't answer and then you'll just um, simply leave a voicemail oh no Jane I've been trying to call you message you they're out of this and what I did is I grabbed you this instead if for any reason that won't work you can just contact Instacart and they'll refund that item to you but I hope it works and I'm gonna go ahead to check out now and I will be on my way um, as soon as possible and that's it so you've taken all the pressure off you as a shopper you know you chased her down but usually if the customer is upset with something they won't affect your rating or your you know they won't put it on you and I've just met, had to make some few you know simple changes like certain macaroni and cheese the white cheddar I got the original right so with that sometimes I'll just go ahead and check out I won't even you know I won't even message them and I won't even call them because it you know they have the option to view the app and see what I'm I'm changing and it's so minimal that I take the risk because honestly waiting for them to answer my message and all that stuff um, it's just not worth it to me so and I, I have five star ratings so um, it's just worked out and saves me time and I make more money tip number five always do a mental shop on the app before you even enter the store so you never have to backtrack backtracking I mean it's gonna happen sometimes it happens even every order but you're gonna do everything you can to not have to do that right you slide to shop right and then you go you message your customer and then you go through the app and you go through all the items that your customer wants so like with Kroger you know I'll see maybe the produce will be at the top and I'll see okay I need to get onions and I need to get this and I need to get tomatoes and then aisle one I'm gonna need to get I need to get bread and I need to get buns and then aisle two I need to get nacho sauce and um, olives and you know so I just it should take 20 to 30 seconds you go through every single item so you kind of have you know it in your brain in the same vein shop the flow of the store so if you walk in and there's produce and then there's dairy and then there's you know whatever meats and you know what I mean like shop the flow you know don't try to get non perishables and then go back to get perishables because it's just gonna waste your time and it should the order shouldn't be taking you that long anyways I, in the past I would get you know the um, non-perishables and then run all the way back to get the perishables and it just was a total waste of time and the payout you know wasn't good so I stopped doing it and I find that my frozen is just as frozen as it was when I shopped it because I'm, I'm being quick that if it's 110 degrees outside I use cooler bags now if I have a huge order then yes you know I'll shop the frozen last but I actively personally I avoid huge orders I, I don't feel like at the end of the day um, I've made more money because I take a huge order I try to get you know the smallest orders with the biggest pay I feel like that I make the most money that way so so if I have a small order I mean it's gonna take me 10 15 minutes 20 minutes to do anyway so I don't have to worry too much about anything getting too warm tip number six always park right next to the cart corral um, never park up close to the store because I find when you're trying to leave it's always it always takes longer you have to wait for people coming and going from the store so I always park a little farther back next to a cart corral um, every season shopper I feel does this because we know as soon as we load the car we want to throw the cart in the corral and we want to go we don't want to have to wait so definitely do that now some people are just gonna ditch the cart um, as a person who used to retrieve carts for a living 106 degree temperature I find that extremely lazy and disrespectful but you do you personally I, I'm not comfortable with the ditch and go method tip number seven bag your own groceries if there isn't a bagger present um, you need to be bagging your own groceries wait your bag should be pretty heavy but not haphazard or you know dangerous or whatever where they're gonna break so what I like to do is I just you know bag them pretty heavy you know enough to where I don't have two or three items in a bag 
and nothing gets crushed and then I just double bag it if I have to because I don't want to risk it breaking but yeah I'm not gonna make 15 trips from house to my car raw chicken can go in with frozen items it just you know put the raw chicken in the bag you know wrap it up and then put it in another bag and frozen items on top so that way it's not but they're together right so you're making less trips in one of the cities I used to live in a huge city in Texas these baggers would put my raw meat with my deli meat and they would put um, you know just like bananas with my bread and bananas and pineapple with my you know soft tomatoes it drove me nuts and I would say oh, okay I'll bag and they would get so mad at the time I was like I'm not gonna deal with the drama I'll just fix it in the car nowadays I have no problem saying oh, okay um, I'm gonna bag because I have to deliver this to two different houses you know just whatever so I don't get the the stink eye and, and sometimes I still do and I don't care I'm okay with that because at the end of the day I'm the one who is getting the tip and I'm the one delivering it and you know I refuse to you know just have bags of raw meat with deli meats and stuff that shouldn't be together so yeah even if it's just one house I'll just tell the you know the bagger like hey um, yeah it's it's multiple houses so I'll go ahead and bag it just because it, I, I know how I like it I know how I'm gonna deliver it it's just it's just smarter so bag your own stuff but you know of course do it do it well tip number eight be their best friend when I'm dropping off groceries um, you know I'm I'm their new best friend you know um, and not fake I mean in general I like people I like small talk for a few seconds but sometimes you can feel them out they're in no mood to talk and I'm just like okay have a great day you know that's all you need to do and they like you recently um, right after the everything hit the fan I was shopping for a guy and this guy was so rude. I mean, I had to go back and forth with every single item because everything was out. Sir, um, they don't have your chicken, but they have, you know, uh, these four chickens. Should I get them? And he didn't reply for three minutes. And then when he did reply, I was like, sir, they, someone just grabbed them. Um, but there is two left. Do you want them? And he's like, yeah, hurry up. He messaged, hurry up. He was just a, like really rude over the messages and I was just like whatever I don't care I'm not getting paid to be nice to you so I don't care I was just like oh hey hi yeah sorry about that and I was just like super friendly super nice and I was like oh how do you make your beans I'm sorry they didn't have your ham hocks and I could tell this was a total afterthought he reaches into his pocket and hands me an additional $20 he had already tipped me 20 on the app but he reaches into his pocket and tips and hands me and says no you're working so hard here you go you know you have to be nice you don't have to kiss their butt but when I'm in front of them you know I let a little bit of my personality out and um, usually the tips are better that way tip number nine get your GPS ready in the store so when I'm at the register if I can't bag I'm hitting all the things you know check out navigate to person customers house so before I've even checked out um, my app is already navigating to their house it's already got it set up so when I load the groceries and I get in my car and I turn my car on I'm boom I'm, I'm, I'm going I always uh, check the address there's nothing worse than driving eight miles in the wrong direction when you know you are you know trying to hustle that day sometimes the app gets it wrong or the GPS gets it wrong make sure that you uh, make sure the address is right tip number 10 be selective on batches but be quick currently right now batches are going so fast I don't know somebody was saying that robots are taking the batches I don't even know what that means right now when you're looking through the available batches look at the item count look at the distance you're gonna have to drive and make a quick decision I don't usually take batches that are more than 50 items unless the payout is $40 or more I, I won't take it I love small batches 20 items or less for $20 you know payout I can get the those done in an hour or less usually less and then I'm on to the next so I'm always looking for small item count $20 or more and I'm just I'm on that right away because that's gonna go quick I don't even care about the driving distance okay guys thank you so much for watching if you like this video please hit the like button um, leave a comment below or email us we make new videos every week so please subscribe and thank you guys so much for watching be well be blessed